Hello and welcome to another edition of the Lab Matters webcast. My name is Ryan Narayan and we have a special guest here today to talk about iPhone jailbreaking and some of the security implications of iPhone jailbreaking. Uh, to my left is Mr. Kostin Rayu, Hello. Uh, Director of Kaspersky Lab's Global Research and Analysis Team. So Kostin, let's start with uh, a general discussion on the state of iPhone uh, mm -hmm. security. You know, what, why don't we um, actually start with a question? So I see you have an iPhone, right? Um, is it jailbroken? Uh, my iPhone is not jailbroken because I chose to uh, live within Apple's world, uh, okay. partly for security reasons, partly for mm -hmm. you know more stability reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, iPhone jailbreaking is is a big issue. It's 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 a big issue around the world, obviously. Um, is it geographically uh, distributed? It's it you know I think yes um, because. Uh, the main reason, what's the main reason why people go to the lengths of jailbreaking the iPhones? And I think it all has to do with the fact that you could go and buy a cheaper iPhone in the States and right. then you can try to use it in the Eastern Europe, where if you want to buy an iPhone, it could be maybe 20 or up to 30% more expensive. So people, they can just right. go and buy it from the States and then try to use it. But to use it in uh, other countries, uh, they, f they need to unlock it. And to unlock it, they need to jailbreak it. Right. So I think this is the model here. So there's an economic, uh, there's an economic incentive to jailbreaking, Absolutely. along with also a very, um, there's a certain cachet, coolness attach attached to jailbreaking, mm -hmm. not only iPhone devices, but any yeah. uh, uh, Android yeah. devices. You're yeah. an Android user. Mm -hmm. uh, is your phone jailbroken? No, and you know, I actually I have people, um, when, it's when they see my phone and they're asking, wow, so that's an Android phone. And I say, yes, so is it jailbroken? And I say, no. And they um, Why? looking a bit strange, you know. So you have an iPhone and you have a jailbreak, uh, right. jailbroken it, and that's not very fashionable. So that's another component to the whole story that it's fashionable to jailbreak the phone. Right, and and you, uh, like you mentioned, in Eastern Europe and other parts of the world, jailbreaking is much much more common yeah. than say in the U.S. and the U.K. where where uh, mm -hmm. there's much more mm -hmm. uh, willingness to mm -hmm. to not jailbreak your phone. Talk a little bit about some of the main security implications of using, of j one jailbreaking jailbreaking iPhones and and having sensitive information, sensitive data living on those devices. What are some of the top three things you would say mm -hmm. are some of the main risks involved with doing that? Well, yeah, obviously, um, as I was saying, the first, the main purpose of jailbreaking the iPhones is to get uh, software on it which can uh, unlock the baseband, which right. is the modem software for the iPhone so that you can use it on any network, right? Uh, by obviously, when you do this, you, um, the software which uh, does the jailbreaking, it also does a number of other things. So for instance, it can enable a secure shell access to your iPhone. So you, the hackers and um, the computer enthusiasts, they can actually tell that they can get remote access to the iPhone and to start playing with it. But unfortunately, what happens here is that um, many of these jailbreaking tools, they actually set a uh, default password to the iPhone. Right, and we, like ha we had a specific issue where that default password is actually yes, used in... in a in computer worm, the IQ right. worm, which exploited the fact that the default password was uh, Alpine, right? Right. So that's one of, the fr one of the things. The other thing is that um, when you jailbreak the iPhone, you are not so... Uh, um, open to the idea of upgrading it to updating the software because you right, can because you revert back to not yeah. being jailbreaking again. Yes, right. you, you can actually lose uh, the whole um, unlocking because uh, you update the software, you update the baseband, and suddenly it's no longer usable. So that's why people, after they jailbreak uh, the iPhone, they no longer apply the updates. And right. um, like it is the case with... Uh, and that introduces obvious security risks of yes, using outdated, yes. older, vulnerable versions exactly, of, yeah. of the operating system, right? Because um, now it's quite um, easy to jailbreak um, older iPhones. Mm -hmm. It's still not possible to jailbreak the most recent iPhone 4 with uh, iOS 4.0.2 mm -hmm. and the newer. Um, it's not possible to jailbreak that, but obviously it's a completely new... Uh, story which could be discussed separately. Right, separately right. Yes, and all the Trojans which pretend to be jailbreaking tools for those OSs. But uh, the but, idea but that, that, that that's a, that's a uh, situation where uh, a lot of search engine optimization take, yes. take advantage of the fact yes. that there's increased interest around exactly. any topic and iPhone jailbreaking. Jailbreaking, jailbreaking I yeah. iPhone iOS mm -hmm. 4 was 
just one of the bigger topics, and we've already seen threats related to those. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things uh, around, uh, and you, you raised the issue of the fact that stuff is not jailbreak, uh, stuff is not, people are not likely to update their phones after it's jailbreak broken. Mm -hmm. There's another issue attached where the, an, an actual remote code execution vulnerability is used as part of the jailbreaking, jailbreaking yes. process, mm -hmm. and that jailbroken device is now continues to be vulnerable exactly. afterwards. Is that a legitimate? Uh, um, would you put that in your top three things? I would definitely put it yes. And um, there, well, obviously, after uh, jailbreaking has been deemed uh, legal um, this year in August, right? Um, a lot of uh, websites appeared which make it very easy for you to jailbreak the iPhone sites such as jailbreakme.com and they take advantage of uh, vulnerabilities in the, um, for instance the uh, Apple uh, PDF reader right, 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 right. to run unsigned code on the device. Right. And anybody else can do the same. Any website can do exactly the same and they could infect the iPhone. So I have, a, I have a, a, an iPhone that's not jailbreak. Mm -hmm jailbroken. You have an iPhone that is jailbroken. We mm -hmm. both have sensitive device, emails, work, ec uh, work Excel, PowerPoint, sales documents, mm -hmm. all kinds of potentially de sensitive information mm -hmm. sitting on both of our devices. Mm -hmm. Is my phone more, is, my, is the data on my phone more secure than the data on your jailbroken iPhone? What, what, is, is that a, a bigger mm -hmm. risk? Let's say, uh, let's say for instance, you just jailbroke your phone. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's no new updates from Apple, so it's a fully functioning, uh, it's fully updated operating system. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, let's, let's use the, the PDF example from recently. You actually got a workaround or some sort of mitigation put in place to block that, that security hole. Is your phone less secure than my phone or is my phone more secure? I think there is an obvious difference between the two devices and one of them will be more secure than the other for obvious reasons and that will be the iPhone that hasn't been jailbroken, right. right? And the other one will be more uh, vulnerable to all kinds of attacks. Uh, we just haven't seen those attacks really taking off until now. So at the moment, that might be the impression that it's perfectly fine to jailbreak it. But I'm sure that in the future that could uh, change radically. Is there more of a risk with uh, rogue apps that do not go through Apple's code review system, mm -hmm. rogue yeah. apps getting onto your device versus uh, the possibility of, because there, there is a possibility of rogue apps on my non-jailbroken legitimate device. Mm -hmm. Is that more of a risk than this is? I think so, yeah, because you see when you, when you actually buy the iPhone from Apple, you're not the real owner of the device. You don't own the hardware. Really? W what you buy is actually as a device which can run application that Apple thinks that right. they are okay for you. So I'm leasing a piece so of hardware. Exactly. You're leasing right a piece of hardware. To Apple for Apple to tell me what I can Correctly, do on it. Correctly, yeah. Some people are not so comfortable with this idea, mm -hmm. and that's another reason why they do the jailbreaking. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, um, I don't think the Apple process is um, entirely foolproof. No, it's yeah, not. It, it's been bypassed in the past, right? Well, I was here at Cansec West in Vancouver um, earlier this year when, you know, the, a fully patched iPhone, non-jailbroken, mm -hmm. They gave a website, you type the website address into mobile Safari, and within four seconds, mm -hmm. that website exploited a vulnerability on the fully mm -hmm. patched iPhone, yeah. and uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. hijacked the entire SMS database mm -hmm. and sent it up to a remote server. Mm -hmm. So we know for a fact that there's no such thing as a foolproof yeah, process, process, obviously. Right. And that's not the number of applications in uh, the App Store is huge. And we, can, we should all be aware of the fact that Apple cannot review every single piece of code mm -hmm. and to completely understand everything they do on your system. So even if the process is valid and they look through the applications and we have seen this fight with Adobe, Apple not willing to implement f Flash Player right, because right. it's such a, a huge can of worms, right? right? So I think that there is a um, risk associated with simply any kind of process, especially when you have so many apps mm -hmm. to review. And you have to be aware of all those risks. So just to wrap up, do you expect to see a lot of uh, uh, malicious threats floating around, uh, specifically iPhones? And if, if we do see um, a, a, a significant growth in malicious activity mm -hmm. on iPhones, do you expect to see it on uh, jailbroken iPhones more than well, as far as I can tell, we could already have um, tons of Trojans for the iPhone, which we have just not discovered yet. 
um, because uh, people do the jailbreaking and there are so many customized firmwares out there uh, which have thousands of files inside and pretty much nobody is looking at all of those files to see exactly what they do what are the right. risks of uh, putting a custom firmware. So it's not fully, the risks are not fully researched yet? I don't think so, yes. Uh, that's why we are currently uh, looking into this very carefully and we'll be publishing a number of papers on the subject uh, quite uh, soon. Oh, excellent. So that's something we have to look forward to. Uh, thank you very much for watching another edition of Lab Matters. I want to thank Kostin Ryu here for sharing his insight with us. And look for us on YouTube and on securelist.com.